Lesson 5-2, Evaluating Expressions. So first we want to understand what the difference is between an expression and an equation. An expression is a collection of monomials or terms. A an equation is also a collection of monomials or terms. Monomials are attached with addition or subtraction in an expression, and they are also in an equation. The difference is, is that an expression has no equal sign and an equation has an equal sign. The expression cannot be solved, only simplified. The equation is solvable. When we want to evaluate expressions, we first identify the values that have been given for the variables in the expression. We replace the variables in the expression with the numerical values and then we follow the order of operations to simplify the expression. Remember for order of operations it's parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication or division, then addition or subtraction. So here we are with some expressions to evaluate. Okay, so we know that x is 5, y is 3, and z is negative 2. That means for every x we'll insert a 5, for every y we'll insert a 3, and for every z we'll insert a negative 2. So here I have 5x squared. So we replace the, the x with a 5, the y was a 3, and the z is a negative 2. Now I'm going to follow order of operations. These parentheses indicate multiplication, not an actual parenthesis, so they don't come first. The first thing will be exponents. Then I multiply. 5 times 25 is 125. 6 times 3, that gives me negative 18. And negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So I have 125 minus 18 plus 8. 125 minus 18 is 107 plus 8 gives me 115. Here I have 6 times x, so that's 6 times 5, plus 2 times x times y plus 4 times z, which is negative 2, to the third. I'm going to do my exponent first. Okay, negative 2 to the third. Because I have an odd exponent, this is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's negative 8. 6 times 5 is 30. 2 times 5 times 3 is also 30 and 4 times negative 8 is negative 32, so that's going to be 60 minus 32, which is going to be 28. Okay, here I have some more variables and values. Okay, so I've got x, y, z, a, b, and c. So here I have an x, a y, a z, and an a x is 2, y is negative 3, z is 5, and a is negative 4, and then that's going to be squared. So I need to do my exponent first. Negative 4 squared is 16. Now I do my multiplication. 3 times 2 is 6, negative 2 times negative 3 is 6 times 5 is 30, and 4 times 16 is 64, so it gives me 36 plus 64, which is 100. You'll notice I'm not using an equal anywhere in here because I don't want to confuse my x and my expression with an equation. We're not solving, we're just simplifying. Okay, here I have 3 times 2 minus 10 squared plus one-half times negative three times two. I'm going to do my operation inside the parentheses first, so that gives me a negative eight. 
Next, I'm going to do my exponent. Three times 64 is 32. No, sorry. I don't know what I was even thinking there. 192. Now, with multiplication, we can do this in any order. I've got 1 half times negative 3 times 2. If I multiply negative 3 times 2 first, I'm going to have 1 half times negative 6. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. So I've got 192 plus negative 3, and that gives me 1. 89. Over here I'm going to have 1 half times negative 4 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4 times 5. Exponents are first. Half of 16 is 8. 3 times 2 is 6 and negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. So that gives me 14 minus 20. So that gives me negative 6. And now I have sort of a division fraction looking thing. So I'm going to plug in over here 5 times 2 times negative 3 times 5 over 2 times negative 4 times 10 squared. 5 times 2, two times negative 3 times 5. So 5 times 2 times negative 3 times 5 is going to give me negative 150. And then I'll have 2 times negative 4 and 10 squared is 100. Now I'll have negative 150 over negative 800 because 2 times 4 is 8 times 100 is negative 800. And 150 and 800 will both divide by 50 which will give me 3 over 16. And that's positive because a negative over a negative is a positive.